Fermilab is a high energy particle physics lab, so we're supposed to be doing discovery science. That's what we're, we're in business for. And for quantum, I think the most exciting thing for me is the prospect of using quantum science and quantum technology to make new discoveries in particle physics. So I'll give you an example. We are trying to understand the nature of dark matter. Most of the universe is made of dark matter. Nobody's been able to detect that in the laboratory. So can we use quantum science and quantum technologies to make a device that can actually detect dark matter? That would be a huge breakthrough for our whole field. One of the things we have at Fermilab is we have a lot of expertise in infrastructure designed to do various kinds of high-tech jobs. We use these for the experiments we have now in neutrinos, for example. But you can use this same kind of technology to try to understand the quantum world. So for example, we build here superconducting cavities for accelerators. But superconducting cavities is one of the leading technologies people are using to try to build quantum computers. So we're using the expertise we already have at the laboratory, but now applying it to the new world of quantum. So we are already working with 22 other universities and labs around the country on various kinds of quantum science and quantum technology projects. This is because we need to pull in that other expertise. We don't know how to do everything that's relevant for quantum. We need experts on quantum information, on material science, on photonics, on all kinds of specialties that we don't have here at the lab. So partnerships has been the key to all of the quantum research that we're doing now. The biggest challenge of quantum research for me is the fact that we don't actually understand the quantum world. Uh, Richard Feynman was the one that said, nobody understands quantum mechanics. So we're trying to study something that we don't understand at a fundamental level. And this makes it difficult even to the design experiments because we're not quite sure what's the right way to think about what we're doing. One of the exciting things about what we're doing now is we're trying to get the quantum world onto the human scale. So we understand the quantum world in the level of atoms pretty well because we've been studying that for 50 years. But how do you make the mysteries and the strange properties of the quantum world appear on the scale of this room? That is something which we now have the technology to do and to make the quantum human on that scale. So I think on the time scale of five years, we will be part of a national effort that will be bringing together all kinds of scientists that don't even know each other now to do things that we didn't think were even possible today. And what directions we're going to go in, it's going to be making better quantum processors for computing, it's going to be making better quantum sensors to make discoveries, and it's going to make better quantum communication so that we can connect together quantum devices and make them act together as a whole. So one of our strengths at Fermilab is we have a very, very strong effort on theory. And of course, quantum theory is the key to understanding everything we're doing in the science and technology of quantum. So we are hoping that our quantum theorists are going to understand both how to move the quantum science ahead and also how to use quantum devices to solve difficult quantum problems. Our field of high energy particle physics is full of difficult quantum problems that you can't solve even using the most powerful supercomputers. So we are hoping that the quantum world and quantum devices is going to be a way to solve problems that we had given up on in some cases decades ago. So one of the things you want to do for a quantum computer is you want to be able to hold quantum information and then manipulate it. If you want to run a program on a quantum computer, you have to convert it into quantum information and then manipulate it until your program is done. But that means you have to hold quantum coherence. Otherwise, the quantum information goes away. So what would you like to do? You would like to have a device that has the ability to hold whatever it is you're using for quantum information as long as possible. Here at Fermilab, we make superconducting cavities to hold quantum information in the form of microwaves, something everyone's familiar with from your microwave oven. But we want to be able to hold a single photon of microwaves and then manipulate it in a quantum way for on the order of seconds, which would be a thousand times longer than what anybody else has accomplished. I think uh, where we are in quantum is very similar to where we were with, let's say, electronics in the 1950s. Electronics existed in the 1950s, but the transistors were big, ugly things. And it was not obvious that that would affect your life in, in, in any real way. But now you pull out your phone, your phone has a billion transistors in it, and it is able to do all kinds of amazing things because the, the technology has advanced so far. 
So with quantum, we're at the very beginning of that. But uh, 20 years from now, you're going to pull out your phone or you're going to have some device that's, that's based on the quantum advances that we're making now. What that will be able to do, I have no idea, but it'll be amazing and it'll be part of everyday life.